Flurry Rogue out of meta build. Not one, but two different builds that cover Flurry. Let's not waste time and let's go. Once you begin leveling up, I recommend sticking to the build I'm gonna show right now, or better to say Flat Flurry Damage Rogue. Later on, I also prepared another build where we're gonna transfer to the Stun Grenades Flurry Rogue with all of this gear here. But first things first, what's mandatory for leveling? Mandatory for leveling would be Grasp of the Shadow as well as Azure Wrath. So those would be two mandatory uniques and the most important thing by far would be the imprint for recovering life or better to say the aspect to recover life undying aspect i think it is judging by the gloves you can already tell that our main damage output would be flurry covered by different passives to deal as much damage as you can with out of meta flurry what's the build good for it's great for speed clears, for nemesis, for uh, nightmare dungeons tier 100, but after pit tier 60, you will need to switch to the other build. What is very good about this build, very easy to play, very cheap, and it's very fast to acquire all items. Now, do not pay attention on Ring of Starless Skies or on a Doombringer. They're not necessary. All you need is like flat critical strike damage on your classic weapons or something like this damage to close enemies instead of a doombringer and you can play instead of this ring you need stats like critical strike chance critical strike damage flat damage damage to close enemies cause you're dealing damage with flurry so as long as your tempering remains on close enemies flat damage critical you're pretty much good to go, that's all you need for the flat damage flurry. Same can be said about amulet. You can see the temperings on amulet and stats that I'm using. How important is the Doombringer on this build? It makes you think the main thing about this build and probably the best thing about this build because this is one extremely tanky rogue that just refuses to die with kept out armor, huge life, okay, because of the Doombringer with great damage output. Now what gives all of the resists? It's Tyriel's Might. It's not necessary. One of the best items that you can also acquire would be the Crest. It's not necessary. Again, the only thing that you need is Azure Wrath. So what are the aspects that we're gonna use? The most important aspect would be for critical strikes with core skills to increase attack speed. The next most important would be 
after the hit with a basic skill, your next core attack will deal additional damage. One of the great aspects on boots would be daze, because you profit a lot out of daze from the skill tree as well. And of course, undying aspects on pets. And one of your rings should have flurry upgrade to damage all enemies around you. Now, what to do with aspects on helmet, on armor, or on weapons? You can go with damage while standing still on one of the weapons. You can go with elemental damage, okay, the changes between physical fire and poison and lightning, cold and shadow. Those are great aspects. Or, in case of armor and in case of helmet, basically any aspect that gives you dodge or flat up core damage is good to go until you acquire these uber uniques. Again, uber uniques are not needed at all. I'm just playing with them because I have them. You don't need them. The build is completely valid even without uber uniques. What was I playing on during this build? Also, Condemnation can work extremely well, well for the core skills, but you need to find one with the maxed out core skills damage, 40%, 35 and above. Until you find Grasp of the Shadow, you can use gauntlets like these with critical strike damage. Also, you can profit a lot out of vulnerable damage. Again, this is one extremely tanky rogue with huge damage reduction and huge lifesteal. Basically, you outlive enemies. It takes longer to kill a boss, but you don't receive the damage from the boss even on tier 100 nightmare dungeons. You literally receive zero damage from the boss, but it's gonna take like two minutes to kill the boss. That's the payoff. What about the expertise? Both combo points and inner sight are completely valid. I recommend inner sight. Now let's go to the skill tree. We start off with puncture and we go for fundamental puncture because of the vulnerable effect. And then you're gonna spread vulnerable with your flurry with improved flurry. That's the build basically and the main thing on a skill tree. Also, we're taking 33 points, one point into siphoning strikes. Then down here in agility skills, we are going for one point into concussive, a point into trick attacks. Then we're gonna go with rugged one point and reactive defense one point. We max out weapon mastery here. For movement, we're taking dash into discipline dash. And this is your main movement skill. In the subterfuge, we're gonna take Dark Shroud and we're gonna take extra critical strike chance with countering Dark Shroud. This is your main defensive skill. One point into Agile, three points into Exploit and three points into Malice. In the imbuements, we're gonna take Shadow Imbuement with Mixed Shadow Imbuement and we're gonna take Cold Imbuement into Mixed Cold Imbuement. We're going to put two points into Frigid Finesse, we're gonna put a point into Chilling Weight, and we're gonna put a point into Shadow Crash, and a point into Consuming Shadows, and we end all up with Precision Imbuement, three points. In the Ultimate Skill Skill Tree, we take a point into Enervation, we take three points into Alchemist Fortune, two points into Second Wind, a point into all of this three here, and we end up with Victimize Key Passive. And now the Paragon board. So we're going into Prime, we're going into Resilience, take the blue nodes, go straight over here and we take Glyph Socket for critical damage or better to say Combat Glyph. We take Skillful and we take Loveless, we move up front and we're gonna take board Eldritch Bounty. On Eldritch Bounty we just go for the dosage and we go for the Potent where we're gonna ramp up a Glyph named Chip. Or increased physical damage and over here we're gonna take a ready supply then we're gonna open up a new board which would be Leirana's instinct where we're gonna take Leirana's instinct instinct for the inner sight and we're gonna take suffused resilience then we're gonna go down and we're taking up a new board that would be exploit weakness on exploit weakness board we're taking the glyph socket immediately where we're gonna put uh, diminish for all rare nodes up or better to say for vulnerable damage from the artifice then we're going down we're taking a hunter killer for the faster clear and we're gonna take exploit weakness legendary node after that we're opening up a new node that would be cheap shot 
Here we're gonna take Oppress, we're gonna take, of course, the Glyph Socket, Cutthroat Damage, because Flurry is Cutthroat, and we're gonna take Devious, and we're gonna take Wills, and of course we're taking Chip Shot for increased damage. Now once we're done here, we're moving up to the next Paragon board, where we are taking Tricks of the Trade Paragon board. The first thing we're gonna take would be the Brawler for the close enemies damage. Then we're opening up a Glyph Socket, where we're gonna put Exploit for vulnerable damage, because we are making enemies non-stop vulnerable. Then we're gonna take Loveless, we're gonna take Focused, and we're opening up the last paragon board that would be cunning stratagem on a cunning stratagem we're going straight for the glyph socket where we're gonna put turf for damage to close enemies and we're gonna take loveless we're gonna take finisher and we end up with dominant for core and basic damage that would be the paragon board for flat blurry rogue completely out of meta but it works and it's very easy to create now the most important question is how long does it take to do all of this not more than 10 hours it's extremely easy to compile this build farm uh hell tides farm nightmare dungeons and get ready for the build i'm gonna show you next or better to say for the build for the greater pits so you can farm greater pits as well dear 80, 90, and above. We're transferring to the Flurry Stun Rogue, or better to say, to Grenadier. Grenadier Flurry Rogue. One of the most irritating builds that exists on planet Earth. The main strength of this build is not when you play solo. The main strength of this build is when you play in PvE. So, for example, if you have someone that can burst out bosses, all you need is a supportive build like a Grenadier Rogue and what you do basically is that you freeze everyone around you, no one can ever play on a screen, bosses are non-stop stun locked and they cannot play, like literally no one can play while you play this Grenadier Rogue. My Grenadier Rogue and how I made him is with extreme tankiness, where we're gonna use potions of life and resist incenses and so on, where he cannot die, he enters in a fight, freezes the entire screen, including the boss, the only downside is the lack of damage. So, if you really want good damage on this type of character, then you're gonna need better weapons. I tested it out with mediocre weapons, one star everywhere, or flat out, no stars at all, barbarian pants and so on, so it can be way much stronger, you can push tier 100, but if you really want to push higher, you do it in PvE, with one burst character and one grenadier, where you get to freeze and stun and stun lock, or like the entire sequence of the map, including the boss, extremely funny build. So let's see how it is. What is the most important and mandatory item on a rogue? It's definitely Saboteur Signet, where we go with stun grenades from this new unique on a rogue. And the next one would be the Doombringer. It is very important, it's not mandatory, but it gives extra life. And when you are tanky, you can go in enemies, you dodge everything, you soak up damage, you max out resists and so on, and you apply crowd control effects on enemies non-stop, so that's why the Doombringer is quite good to have. You don't need to have the crest, but if you want sustain, Tyrael's Might is really, really good in this case. So, by importance, it would be the Signet into Doombringer, into Tyrael's Might, into Crest. The most important to play this would be the Signet. What do we search on amulets, on rings, on weapons? We search stun grenade damage and we search Caltrops size absolutely everywhere. So when you spawn Caltrops, it will cover the entire screen. So every single weapon has stun grenades, Caltrops size, stun grenades, Caltrop cooldown reduction, 
stun grenades and here I added total armor to cap armor or better to say to cap damage resist. As far as gloves go you can opt in either for critical strike or for more stun grenade flat damage your choice how you want to do it they're both valid. Now judging by the stats it doesn't seem like you deal much damage but trust me you deal damage like a maniac you crit non-stop you stun lock you freeze, no one plays on a screen. Very funny build to play. I had a lot of fun. I left a lot while I was playing this, to be honest. And I believe this is the funniest build I ever created in Diablo 4. So if you want to test out and try something new, here we go. Now let's see the aspects. Aspects. We go with stealth, stun grenades. Then we're gonna go with sustain from Flurry with undying aspect on pants then we're gonna go with again grenades have a chance to freeze then we're gonna go with grenades with caltrops and increase grenade skill damage then you wanna rotate this aspect for amulets i was just testing stuff out so this aspect with cluster stun grenades will go on an amulet while evade shadow step will go on a ring that's the entire difference between these two. So basically we're taking five grenade aspects on all of our equipment. And the final thing would be Flurry, circle around you so you have AoE heal. That's about it. The stats we're looking for is life absolutely everywhere. Then it's dexterity, then it's critical damage and stun grenade damage. Stun grenade damage is mandatory as tempering on every single light. Now what about specialization? We play with preparation because our cooldowns are non-existent and we're gonna spam. What's the combo? Combo is caltrops, caltrops into concealment, into ulti, into shadow step, into again because everything resets because of preparation you keep playing non-stop. Again caltrops, caltrops into Concealment into ulti, into shadow step, and repeat and repeat and repeat, and the entire screen is non stop stunned and frozen, including the main boss of the map. Believe it or not, that's how stupid it is. The only thing it lacks is damage. You need better gear than I'm showcasing here with better stats. I pushed tier 80 plus with this build. I believe I can push all the way to 100 plus if I acquire better gear. And I also believe you can easily push with 140 plus in PvE if you have only one character that bursts and this one to stun lock the entire screen. Now let's go to the skill tree. What we want to do is puncture, make enemies vulnerable with fundamental puncture, then one point into flurry and then spread vulnerability. After that, we're taking three points into sturdy, one point into siphoning strikes. Then we're gonna go down, we're gonna take shadow step with discipline shadow step. Then we're gonna take rugged three points, reactive defense three points, weapon mastery three points, three Regions. points into concussive, and three points into trick attacks. Then we're gonna take our main spell basically here that would be caltrops and we're gonna take that caltrops deal cold damage and chill enemies this is non-stop freeze all around when you play and this is the entire trick of the build with caltrops because they cover the entire screen when you cast them now because of the gear tempering after we're done with agility skills we transfer to subterfuge where we're gonna take concealment to reset non-stop for our ulti to deal extreme amount of damage and to reset skills basically with countering concealment then we're gonna take agile three points one point into mending obscurity three points into exploit and three points into malice then we transfer down where we're only gonna take frigid finesse and chilling weight ramp up all points into them you don't need cold imbuement you just need these because your kill caltrops will freeze none stop as well as aspects and passives on your gear so you want to boost freeze then we transfer into ulti where we're gonna take that trap into prime that trap we do not take supreme that trap because we don't need it with cooldown reduction because it's already available non-stop because of preparation okay 
And the last thing, one point into Adrenaline Rush, one point into Haste, and three points into Impetus, and we finish everything off with exposure for even more stun grenades damage. That would be the key passive mastery, exposure. Extremely valid is also victimize. So test it out, see what fits your playstyle. These two are absolutely great. I was testing out the exposure, it works phenomenal with exposure. I am yet to test closed quarter combat to see the multiplier percentage on crowd control because this is a crowd control build. So Pick something, test it out, see where you deal most damage. Right now, I'm on exposure. And now, the Paragon board. What do we do with Paragon board? We take Prime, we take Resilience, all the nodes around. We go straight for the Glyph Socket, we take Vulnerable Damage with Exploit, we take Skillful, we take Lawless, and we open up a new Paragon board, and that would be Deadly Ambush for Traps, because now we play with Traps a lot. We're gonna take Trapper, we're gonna take Deadly Ambush, we go all the way up through Dexterity and we take Stun Grenade Damage, our main damage output and the most important Glyph, Explosive. We take Cunning, we take Engineering and we max out Dexterity everywhere to receive that nearly 500% Stun Grenade Damage because everything that you do, every skill that you cast, all of the 6 skills, every single basic attack will spawn stun grenades and you want to increase stun grenade damage as much as you can and this is it this is the main focus of the build this glyph after that we're unlocking a new paragon board up here where we gonna take chip shot from here we go to oppress into chip shot we move forward we're gonna go into glyph we're gonna take damage to crowd control enemies because we keep getting enemies under crowd control effects we're taking vials we're taking devious and we're taking calculated and then we're spreading up and left first we're gonna go to the left on the left we're taking exploit weakness legendary node so board we go up here, we take a glyph socket where we're gonna take chip. After we take chip, we go for the artifice, we go for the dosage, and we go for the exploit. Then we go down for the unassailable, and finally we're taking exploit weakness. Then we're spreading up here, and we're gonna take uh, training into knowledge. We take a glyph, we put combat glyph for the critical strike damage. And we're done with that part. Now over here where I said that we go left and up. Now we're going to go up. And the final points will go into Cunning Stratagem. Where we're going to take Finisher and Lawless. We put a Glyph Socket with Turf. Turf gives us damage to close enemies. Because we are playing with Flurry Grenades. And we are non-stop in enemies' faces. And we're going to get strength everywhere around where we can and that would be the paragon board for the grenadier flurry rogue how long does it take to create this one well if you played the first one it's gonna take an additional five to ten hours to transfer from flat damage flurry into grenadier flurry it takes a bit more time because of the farming of nightmare dungeons and so on and to scale up and to find better gear because this build does require better gear now what you can use instead of doombringer exactly the same weapon with exactly the same tempering like this until you get a doombringer for life the main point is for you to be tanky and keep freezing and stun locking enemies so no one plays around grenadier rogue one of the best supportive builds for PvE. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll be seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching.